So obviously we just spent a good bit of time talking about all the fashion stuff because that's probably what most of our listeners know you for. But I suppose give them a bit of background about what you actually do kind of like professionally. Yeah, for sure. So uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. Most people come up to me and they're like, so how's it being a freelancer? How's it like working for yourself? And, you know, in some regards, I'm I'm delighted that that's what people see. Like they see that I work yeah. hard, you know, and I and I, that I, I push myself, um, which I'm totally honored by. But um, the reality is I, I work a nine to five and I work a five to nine. Yeah. So my nine to five right now is uh, working in one of the world's largest independent PR companies called Edelman. Mm. Um, so I started there f- a few weeks back. I uh, haven't worked in social media agencies before that. And were they kind of smaller ones, were they? Um, yeah. So the, the guys I used to work with, uh, an amazing team, uh, incredible creatives, unbelievable strategists, yeah. um, just amazing guys on, on social media. Like, they they put in work yeah. and and I was part of that team for for three years and I helped you know build that brand and get it to you know the stage it was at with working with clients and some of the clients we got to work with were incredible but right now what I do is maybe a step back from social media but more broadly creative so I'm a content creator and that ranges everything from you know social media content yeah. to design work to creating presentations and pitches to animations uh kind of everything yeah um, anything that is done really yeah like media drops yeah. you know copy probably a little bit anything. of copy but mostly design driven yeah. like i spend a lot of time you know behind adobe yeah. a lot of time with like three screens yeah. set up in front yeah. of me and just especially like, when there's so many platforms to cater to like you i don't know what specifically you're working on but for a brand like now you know snapchat maybe if they're aiming for anywhere yeah. from 13 to 25 like instagram yeah, so the, tv like for sure so there's, there's a couple of areas that i'm like hugely interested in um with regards to like where content is going to go yeah. um one is and it just derives from podcasting but is uh, yeah. the idea of immersive audio yeah. and then the second is because it's passive yeah for yeah. sure and then the second would be uh, like mobile driven content or like yeah. vertical content um i just think that we're barely scratching the surface on a exactly. lot of them and I, I know i said it to you off air before we kicked off but like my background is actually in uh, audio production before it was yeah. in graphic design so uh, i used to work with bang and olufsen doing mm. uh, home cinema and multi-room like hi-fi yeah. systems and then i worked with some amazing guys in the listening suite that used to be on wicklow street and uh, we used to just do these incredibly tuned hi-fi systems for people's houses no two systems were the same but i just picked up this ear for you know for music and for audio and all the nuances and intricacies so like now that I spend a lot of time like, you know, in studio and working on visual content to try and drive a lot of that I have. Like yeah. I'm in my space, you know, I've got my my earbuds in and I'm like really kind of fickle yeah. about that kind of stuff. So like, yeah. I want to make sure that it's it's right. But I spend a lot of time in Spotify and then you get hit by a lot of ads because I'm too cheap to pay for yeah, premium. Yeah, yeah. And um, in those ads, you start seeing like, you know, these could be really exactly in depth. And because so much of my work is, creating visual ads that are supposed to like you know catch your attention yeah. and you know create thumb stoppers that's that's what we called it yeah now you're like well how do you create thumb stoppers for your ears for your ear, yeah, yeah. you know what what is that yeah. you know is is it you know you it can't be you know a big smash it can't exactly. be like you know a boom or an explosion yeah. or it can't be too harsh or jarring it's got to be really clever yeah. and and i just think we've barely even scratched but that. then even not so repetitive that every time you hear it you know because there's only probably five ads in rotation on spotify and you probably come across this where you hear the same ad over and over again yeah and that's no gonna, matter how clever it is the first time the fifth time it's not so clever. yeah and anymore. that's going to change and like a huge issue of that is frequency but then spotify are just bringing in their new self-serving uh, ad platform which yeah. is going to be amazing for creatives yeah. who can tap into this ahead of time yeah because you're going to beat the band with every like every other agency are going to be racking their heads when like how can we get this thing out there how can we you know work our brands how can we build ourselves up on this platform you know a couple of people who can sit in a studio and yeah. and mix and master and get this you know really clever piece of audio yeah. are going to surpass everyone and it's going to be exactly. so cheap because no, there's no competition exactly but the more and more and more people that do it the more variety of ads we're going to hear yeah. and there's going to be a point like like people don't hate advertising they just hate bad advertising exactly um if it's good 
people talk about it yeah. and that's the point mm. um that's what i'm paid to do like my job is to catch your attention but my goal is to kind of keep it yeah do you know that kind of way so yeah it's a space that i'm really interested in at the moment because growing you know getting awareness out about the magazine getting awareness out of the podcast as well so i've been listening to you probably know a lot of gary vaynerchuk yeah yeah and like right now he's pushing like the facebook ads or like so it's an interesting space for for people to consider if they do have anything that they're working on creatively that yeah, they need to promote. It's actually funny with um, Gary V because the, the agency that I used yeah. to work for, um, we were actually the ones who brought him over yeah, um, yeah. To, to speak in At the Dublin Mansion House. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we got him the first time. We were the first time Gary V ever spoke here um, was at a sold out show in the Mansion House yeah. on Dawson Street, which was incredible. So, I'd like, say so. there was. Uh, at the time, there was six or eight of us who were working on that. Um, one or two guys in the agency pioneered like all the ads and stuff and they smashed it because we sold 740 something tickets yeah um we actually had a queue of 100 people outside with cash in their hands who were like let me in just like <laughs> literally like that fry meme being like shut up and take my money yeah. they just didn't care but like fire marshal shut down the event they were like crazy you cannot have any more people in and it was so good like he spoke for like an hour and 15 hour and 20 minutes and yeah. then did like almost a full hour of Q&A yeah. with people and he just tore He's great. lumps yeah. out of people yeah. and and like it was good because people need that like Irish people 100%. needed that kind of reality check um, so yeah like that was that was amazing to, yeah. to, to work with him like work with him for him on yeah. that it was, a, it was a weird dynamic but exactly. it, it, it was great but yeah it's, ama- it's, it's really important like mm. I mean if you're not like I'm not saying everyone needs to do paid advertising on social media but you need to advertise yourself somehow exactly and paid is just it's an easy way to do it and if you can do it well you can do it cheaply like yeah. it's not and that's kind of how i feel like what you're talking about when you're working in the content space now it's like you can drive it just from creating engaging content it's pretty much all about the content exactly if your content is shit your ads are shit you're going to spend money you're going to waste money yeah it's it's as easy the content has got to give value yeah that's that's as easy as i can make it if you're not like if you don't care about the stuff that you're making whether it's for yourself or on behalf of a client no one else will give a fuck yeah. it's it's as exactly, simple as that they can see through it yeah absolutely it's so easy yeah so what tips would you give to probably i don't know people starting out pretty much me essentially like you know yeah and like you know i think you deserve way more credit than probably what what you give yourself but my number one tip I'm um, sorry, I'm just trying to put no, this stuff here just so I make sure I have it. Number one tip, absolutely, and like everyone who I've ever worked with is just going to like roll their eyes when they hear me say it, but like reverse engineering. Mm. You've got to find people who you admire, brands you like, how to get to them. and you've got to reverse engineer how they made that poster, how to design that logo, what shapes did they use, what colors did they use, why did they use them. You've You've got to build your own understanding of how these people did this yeah. thing in a certain way and what purpose does it serve when you can successfully reverse engineer something and create it not only do you get that little bit of instant gratification that everyone kind of needs like you need that for a confidence boost when you're starting a design but it's more so just to get an understanding of how did someone get to that level yeah you're learning from their mistakes and you're learning from their experience so that would be like be for sure like my number one um my whole kind of philosophy on design anyway um and my outlook on it is is based on a couple of really simple rules um number one is observation Mm. then it's conversation and then it's collaboration yeah like i can pretty much boil everything every single piece of content or design that i've ever made into those things yeah because there's there's the brief then there's what the brief actually says then there's the brief that actually says the thing that it actually says that the client thinks it says that they think that it should say. Yeah. Then there's your interpretation of all of that. Then there's your boss's interpretation of that. Everything in between the lines as well. And everything in between. And at the end of the day, you have to just interpret what you see, hear, read, touch, smell, taste, yeah. everything. Figure out how to put that through your brain, exactly. your, you know, your internal system. You've got to figure out yeah. how to wrap it up and then get it from that brain through your hands, through your eyes, back yeah. out onto some paper or onto Photoshop yeah. or whatever. And it's got to make well, bloody yeah. sense. And you've got to try and figure out a way to rationalize these things. So that's that would be my number one. Number two is like 
under start to learn and understand uh, color theory and the psychology behind colors why certain brands go with certain weights of font why they go with certain iconography why they present themselves in a certain way and how does that match their brand values and then if you're trying to build your own brand or do your own you know you know curated instagram account or whatever yeah. find what your brand values are like are you a strong bold confident stylist well you will go with a strong bold confident logo yeah. and an icon and a strong bold confident color palette yeah it won't and, be pastel for example or yeah, yeah. because it put, that puts you in a certain space exactly um you know you're not going to use an icon if you don't need to use an icon if you're trying to build your name you'll probably use your name as the brand and you start to you know build things that way and but for sure there's so many amazing sources out there um i mean i started on on dribble which is d or i yeah bbb l e dot com yeah. that's that's the one that's where you start um yeah looking on pinterest instagram's getting amazing right now yeah. for content creators especially for like hand-drawn lettering and stuff like that that's where i would start figure out how the fuck these people did it yeah reverse it engineer it understand it and then apply it to your own thing like grand if gucci used a certain font and they wrote gucci take that understand the font write your own bloody name in it but just figure out why and, yeah. and then from there you can kind of just do whatever like 100%. you can literally do anything from there um just trying to think like what i mean just taking in from what you've said i mean i just wanted to throw back maybe virgil is actually a good case study of what you're talking about with observation just because like so he wants to build a streetwear brand so he takes the lines that are literally on the street flips it pretty much reverse engineers that puts on a t-shirt and then sells it back to you yeah and you know what i mean but like what he's really doing there is like in the age of social media it's all about relevance yeah. like content is about being relevant to the audience so he's taking stuff that you can already see touch and feel yeah like these tangible lines like he's taking lines from a building you can see that you can go and touch it if like, yeah, that's yeah, what if you're you into <laughs> like if you're on a stroke of building the stroke of building yeah but you can see these shapes in person and he, all he's doing is repackaging yeah and not in a bad way yeah but he's just representing and then captioning it. as well yeah you know? yeah and that's funny because that's an architecture yeah. thing and that's you know old blueprint stuff so when i saw yeah. you know when i was introduced to virgil's work first i was like i can see exactly yeah. you know where where he's getting this from and it for me it makes sense it's yeah. not just a a token this is his trademark now it's actually he was doing it anyway for years and years and years yeah. before it became a trademark so like yeah more yeah 100%. more props to him for it yeah no i just thought when you said all that i just thought i'd throw him back to you so I suppose who would be kind of like the designers that you actually like? I know I just threw Virgil at you. But. Yeah, Virgil for sure. Um, I mean, I, I definitely wouldn't put him on like one of my icons, yeah, no, but I yeah, mean, he's, he's incredible. Yeah. So absolutely Virgil. Um, guys I really love for typography, um, a fella called Chris Doe, who runs an agency called Blind LA. Yeah. Um, he also runs like an online channel called The Future, which is F-U-T-U-R. Uh, incredible for tutorials, for guidance. His typography work is just so clean. Mm. Um, but his rationale for working on, on work is just cl crystal clear. He also is uh, amazing for teaching freelancers and designers enough about how to charge. Yeah. Um, you know, he doesn't touch a project for under 25K. Um, doesn't, you know, he, 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 he doesn't go by time. He doesn't go by, you know, all these normal factors that, you know, let's say laborers yeah. might go by. He's like, this is what you want this is what it costs yeah you want me to do it this is what it costs plus one like <laughs> it, it's as easy as and and he's boiled it down like he's for sure defined the career of so many designers so like you know and i actually got a chance to meet him uh a few months back he spoke in iconic offices uh on stevens green and yeah. he he was as good and as charismatic in, in a 30 minute talk series as he is in a three-hour online session that he normally does yeah uh, there's another guy called uh, Aaron Draplin who most people will know from like Adobe Illustrator kind of tutorials and stuff like that. He just is nuts, like how quick his mind works. So yeah. he actually is the guy behind Field Notes notebooks right. and he just starts like raw sketching stuff and then he's like, okay, cool, I've spent 10 minutes doing that. Straight to Illustrator, yeah, yeah. bangs out some shapes. Everything's based off primary shapes. He gets a lot of... Um, inspiration from like old vinyl from badges stamps yeah. just random shit he yeah, finds yeah. like way out in the boonies in the u.s yeah, and yeah. 
he just has folders and folders and folders full of this shit. But he just recreates it. And he's like, that design stood the test of time 70, 80 years ago. That's why it works now. And he just he's just taken those principles and applied them now. Because they were limited by technology and by processes and by people's understanding of design. He's like, it's got to be as simple as. Um, and there's a difference between simple and minimal. Um, and he, he's nailed that. Mm. Um, yeah, probably... So yeah, there's a couple of other guys. Instagram, there's a guy who runs an account called Bowgasm, which is just crazy nuts. It's all about gradients and flowy shapes. And he he did this uh, Deadly project last year, which was like a poster day for the whole year. And that's that's how I came yeah. across him first. And I was just like, this stuff bangs color wise. It was nuts. It was just so different to what i'd normally seen that i was like yeah that's really cool yeah. i, I want to do more of that so I gotcha, yeah, yeah th- those three would probably shape from like yeah would shape a lot of kind of my design career and my yeah. inspiration and did you get a start in that in college or was that um kind of self-taught afterwards a little bit of column a a little bit of column b yeah, um so i did a course in multimedia in dcu uh, i was a three-year level eight degree and um, for anyone who's actually probably yeah, like filling I, out their yeah, cao yeah, right yeah. now i just um, thought i actually would throw maybe even some practical like advice out here on yeah this. no life advice um skip ty just fuck that uh, and go straight into a three-year level eight degree and finish college when you're 20 that's what i did and it's class it like get in and get out like the world is so big right now yeah. the, the amount of jobs and yeah. career directions you can take yeah. right now by the time you learn your four-year marketing degree and then do two years in a master's everything you learned is is it's, gone yeah like yeah you'll have a you know a knowledge and a basic understanding of it but like when i worked in in the old agency facebook was changing every week yeah instagram changes every week snapchat lives snapchat dies twitter lives twitter dies they all they all ebb and flow and when you're doing it on behalf of a brand you have to be as tactile as yeah. possible you have to be as agile and understand their needs and the growing needs and wants of consumers yeah. you are not going to learn that in college yeah. what you are going to learn in college is how to interact with people who are your age who you've never met before how to you know blend into a multicultural society which you should how to become independent and pay your own bills get a job and just how to survive away from the cocoon of home. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with any of those things if you're fortunate enough to continue to have those opportunities presented to you. But personally... It Take might, full advantage of it as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. So like in in the degree um, multimedia, you could shape however you wanted to go with it. So first year, pretty broad understanding of a little bit of everything, uh, hence the kind of jack of all trades. I was already interested in design a little bit, but I was playing in a band at the time. So I was really into audio. Um, So I ended up going down a route of uh, audio post-production for film. Mm. That was like, that was my jam. That's what I was going to get into. Then the recession hit and Brown Bag Films and all the other big production houses were like, yeah, we don't want any post-producers anymore. Uh, We're just hiring people from London. And yeah, if you don't have eight eight years of experience, then we don't want you. So you know yeah i could have pushed more and i probably might have gone in for an internship but that wasn't going to suit me for for that time so what i decided was second year i need a skill i need a sellable skill that's going to net me like increased income that means i'm not going to have to go back down the ladder yeah like i'd worked in a super value scrubbing shelves and cleaning toilets i worked in a sign shop you know out in the boonies like making signs for farmers I was hitting college. I was like, I'm not like, for me, it's always take a step up. Yeah. So I was like, I need a skill that's going to get me to this next space. And for that, at that time was, was visual kind of communications yeah. and design. So yeah, I got into branding, doing graphics for barbers, for startups, for literally any small, medium sized business yeah. in Dublin that needed work. So I think in, in that first year, when I got my Mac and I actually paid for Adobe, I didn't pirate it like the yeah, rest yeah, of you yeah. guys out there. <laughs> um, yeah, I paid for it and I was like, you know what, I need to make this whole thing right. pay, pay back. Exactly. So year one, I think I maybe worked on 50 or 60 clients. Yeah. Um, I pretty much had like a job a week mm. um, that I was like, re- I'm like not making money on them yeah. at all. But 
enough that I was like trying, trying. and trying and trying. Exactly. And um, then I started to. You have to put in the hours as well. Yeah, for sure. And then you get to a place where you're like, okay, I can charge double and then work half. Yeah. And it's not for a because case your quality of, stepped up though from doing those yeah, other six. Absolutely, right? and it's not a case of wanting to work less. Yeah. It's it's working smarter yeah. and valuing yourself, your time, exactly. and, and your skills. And then it gets to a place you can double again yeah, and do a quarter. Efficient. Yeah, and then um, yeah, so then I was like, I actually just really love visual. Like I love starting with a blank canvas, drawing my rulers in, and then just going yeah. and seeing what I can make from it. And then yeah, I started to do that for myself for the brands and businesses that i was building personally for brands and businesses that my friends were building yeah uh, and then on behalf of clients and yeah i kind of just build this really nice portfolio of just really clean branding really clear visual messaging and yeah it's gotten to me like it's gotten me to where mm. i am now yeah 100 percent. i like what you said earlier it kind of reminds me i know I mentioned gary v earlier but when you said you're nine to five but then you're five to nine you know yeah. where you put in that little bit extra and then that kind of makes all the difference. Yeah, so the only time I don't work is weekends uh, and after nine o'clock. Yeah. Um, I don't put a time on it. I don't say I do 70 hours a week. I don't do 80 hours a week. I don't do 50. It doesn't matter. Like the number is irrelevant. Yeah. My working hours are between nine in the morning and nine in the evening. Yeah. I might take a couple of breaks in between <laughs> exactly, then. Yeah. But if you want me and you want to work with me, that's there my times. Yeah. I don't, I don't do stuff on the weekends you call me after nine o'clock, I'm going to hang up. Yeah. You call me and email me after nine or 10. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm not, I'm you not going to respond. Yeah, like yeah. tomorrow is always fine. Yeah. Like anyone who needs stuff at that time doesn't have their priorities. Right. Yeah. Uh, most businesses operate on a nine to five and eight to five, yeah. you know, six o'clock at the latest. Yeah. A client is going to leave their desk at five to five. They're not going to be, if they're on you at five to five, it's probably just either that they absolutely desperately need to have that thing at that minute or they just are doing it to bust your balls. Yeah. And you just have to call bullshit on that sometimes. That, yeah. You can accept it in the beginning. The important thing is call, call bullshit on it. Yeah. And then just be like, tomorrow's fine. And they're like, oh yeah, tomorrow's fine. Like, go home, have dinner, go see your family. Exactly. Yeah. Go hang out with your housemates, go meet your girlfriend, go do whatever. Yeah. Just don't be in work. Like, compartment compartmentalization mm. is a huge thing for me yeah um and yeah it's, you it's have to just have the work-life balance as well yeah for sure you just you just have to have balance in general yeah um i don't care if you work for the whole day just balance it with yeah. with something um so yeah that's yeah 100%. it's just important to stay busy exactly yeah and um i suppose then like kind of on a lighter note like what maybe kind of like shows would you recommend for like people to watch that might be like they might still get some value from but like say it is your downtime you're on a break but you might still want to be half productive like yeah um yeah for sure so big thing for me is like i try not to watch like too much tv i do consume a lot of video content just because of my nature being online all the time so like i got really um deep into youtube and stuff like that but um, always crime documentaries yeah, yeah, yeah. always because yeah. those guys are the most creative anyone yeah. who does a bank heist or an art heist yeah. they're the ones you want to follow see, uh, evil genius yeah Great. watch watch the whole thing it, yeah just like uh, I'm, I'm obsessed with stuff like that uh like russian criminal yeah. prison tat like you know tattoo shows like all yeah, that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. stuff um if you're into menswear and you're looking for like a new show um there's one called paq which is on the kyra tv network which is yeah. so good for really young really guys good. it's like top gear before yeah a little bit um it it stems from that kind of that kind of innate kind of british humor to yeah. pr presentation to like you know being on a show but it's got that internet culture driving it yeah. so the guys from paq are incredible um i'd actually do anything to try and work yeah. with them at some point like they're yeah. they're so nuts they're great um cooking shows like binging with babish always great um really into like creators like peter mckinnon casey yeah. i watch for a nostalgic kind of a thing at this yeah, point I just know. because 368 is a bit different obviously but yeah and and it's great um I've, I've nothing against it uh chris howe again chris doe from yeah. the future watch a lot of that uh vice land is big for me just because a lot of the episodes are so digestible yeah um they can take 30 minute doc make it into 15 minutes make it into three minutes and you can still get the gist of what everything is um 
but for sure like my biggest inspiration for when i'm like online and i'm just so excited for whenever any of his videos go up but is uh maddie madison from viceland and most people don't know him but he's just this crazy wild canadian uh chef um just runs these like unbelievable restaurants but he's just has these a uh, couple of incredible shows on vice so like supper time matters um his instagram uh maddie madison is just so funny like his stories are hilarious but you get a lot of style inspiration a lot of cooking inspiration yeah. a lot of life um outlooks from yeah. him he had he had this great show a few years ago called dead set on life which he started uh after he had i think it was a heart attack from like what age is he oh he's young like yeah. i think he was in his 20s when he had it and it was from cocaine so like crazy yeah he he went off the rails but yeah. now he's like he's just got this hyper level of energy and when i'm like in my downtime like that's the kind of stuff like i feel like he's like my spirit animal yeah. so i'll like watch his stuff same with action bronson yeah. like they're that <laughs> yeah, yeah. they're that kind of character yeah. um bigger than life yeah um but really passionate about what yeah. they do so Did you ever come across joey diaz yeah yeah I, like obviously coco yeah, yeah. the fucking yeah. cocksuckers yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i love joey um yeah. joe rogan obviously yeah. amazing um,